politicians are always pushing and promoting something. Chances are there are unknown ulterior destructive motives behind it. Okay, Russia and Ukraine. This is what so many people are talking about right now. So many people have their attention focused on what's going on between Russia and Ukraine. According to what we're exposed to in mainstream media, we understand that Russia is overrunning Ukraine. Many people may not understand why, and I'm not going to pretend that I am a political analyst. I am not one by a long shot. And there's so many things that I realize I don't know, but I will go over things that I know that I do know. Basically, Russia is protecting its best interest by ensuring that Ukraine does not fall under the allegiance of NATO or UN. Because basically put short, if they do that, if Ukraine does officially join NATO, then that means more Western influence and access can be there. So that's kind of like their back door. So they want to make sure that people who they're not really in super tight bed with or have the warm and fuzzies with, they don't want them to have full access to their country and be in striking range and be in airspace and all those things. Think about it basically as the concerns over the communist occupation and allegiance of Cuba. Because many people were concerned that communist territory is right there in our backyard, basically having more than enough missile strikes, access, you get it. So basically it's the same thing. So the Ukraine is to Russia as what Cuba was to the U.S., at least is what they report to us. Now I understand, of course, there are casualties. There are things there that happen that aren't really desirable on any side, Russian side, Ukrainian side, or from people looking in. Many people aren't going to, or it's not going to sit well with a lot of people who are looking in, no matter what country you are, where you're from. The thing about war, of course, you have casualties on both sides. Don't take my words as being a sympathetic person to Russia because there's so much things that I don't know so many things about this this man Putin that I'm not too sure of certain things I may agree with certain things I definitely do not agree with if Russia really wanted to put it on Ukraine it could have already as you can see they are deliberately not coming in full force it's one thing that many people fail to really realize with the strength that Russia has where they just outnumber Ukraine by leaps and bounds, by manpower and military military might, just in, in general. They just straight up just overrun Ukraine. And they could have done that, but they don't want to. They want to tread it lightly because technically they are still the same peoples. It's just different interests are happening right now. And it's most of the tension is happening at the border between Ukraine and Russia. Speaking about casualties, I found it very interesting where... One of my friends, I'll call him Mr. Jenner right now, brought to my attention that the U.S., amongst many, which they did last year as well, and other times before, had an airstrike in Somalia. This was late February, when so many people were concentrating on Ukraine and Russia and Russia and Ukraine and how much people were going through so many issues and so much turmoil over there. For some reason, that kind of slipped under the radar. Because, of course, with mainstream media being controlled by many different entities, there's going to be certain things that they may deem, they being the ones that control the media, may deem undesirable to expose to the public. Usually, again, like I just said, with any kind of combat or military engagement with another entity, and there's actual bombardments, firearms, munitions, chances are there's going to be casualties. What we don't really want to hear about are civilian casualties. And with the most recent strike back in February this year from the U.S. and Somalia, they're stating, they being U.S. and AFRICOM, AFRICOM basically being the United States African Command, so it's under the United States, they reported that there are no civilian casualties. When an entity such as America, United States of America, states that there were no civilian casualties. 
when other independent sources and journalists go to the site to find out what's really going on, on the ground, they happen to find that there were civilian casualties, unfortunately. Now, I'm not trying to give a tit for tat um, to take away from what's going on with Russia and Ukraine and the interest of NATO, which, of course, the interest of America. But at the same time, if we're so concentrated, if we're so concerned about conflict and casualties and reporting it and bringing it to the forefront of everyone. Why is not something like the Somalian airstrike recently, which is supposed to be a strike against Al Qaeda members, which from doing some more research and reading, people joined the Al Qaeda mission because so much missions and strikes that the U.S. have carried out and alliances have carried out. It's been an insane amount of casualties altogether and so many people see that and they start to have a little seething disdain for america more and more understandably and unfortunately so this is why we have so much more people when they see america doing certain things justice is not being dispersed properly that's going to make you feel a way and of course that'll make you turn against certain countries against certain regimes. And this is exactly what's kind of happening uh, as far as, you know, the Al-Qaeda groups. I forgot the, their name specifically that were operating in Somalia. And this is not the first airstrike, unfortunately. More of what I, what I do know of the whole Ukraine and Russia thing. We're just supposedly easing off with the whole COVID thing because they, they had us under pressure for about two years straight under pressure, mandates, mask, vaccine, mandates, mask, vaccine. So now these things are easing up now. Places like New York City are starting to ease up on their indoor mask mandates and vaccine mandates. We're easing up. The, mind you, the damage is already done. The damage is done from a, lot of, from a lot of people's standpoints, a lot of people on the ground. Their lives are totally changed forever. But the one thing I do know is that whenever entities that control the narrative, control mainstream media. Whenever you see a lot of political agendas always being pushed and promoted, you always look at it. Hollywood is pushing, promoting something. The news is always pushing and promoting something. Politicians are always pushing and promoting something. Chances are there are unknown ulterior destructive motives behind it. We have a long track record of going through this. So just as they've always pushed and pushed and pushed certain things and then after Enough time passes, guess what? Give enough time, the truth will start to come out. So now that we're so focused on what's happening with Putin and Russia and Ukraine, we have to really ask ourselves, why are they focusing so much and pumping only certain things to us? We have to learn to look around. We have to learn to peel, the la peel back the layers, look at the bigger picture. We have to learn to unlearn what they're trying to teach us. Again, what I do know, Russia's interest is that they don't want pretty much Western access to their backyard. What I also I do know is that the media can't be really trusted that much. So we have to use the eyes of a detective. We have to do our own research. We have to take everything we hear up front with a grain of salt because what they use to pepper us with it makes us get feelings. We get inside our feelings. Once we get inside our feelings now, unfortunately, we start to make rush judgments. We start to make rush actions. The past two years is totally crystal clear of when you get pumped with fear every single day, this is what happens. We now have a set of broken people from that rush judgment, from that fear being pumped into us. Here now, COVID magically takes a back seat and now everyone's eyes are on Russia and Putin. Anyways, that's all I got. You want to catch more of my, con my content, you could go to my website at brooklynbaritone.com. Check out some merchandise, too. You might see something you want to pick out. You may like it. Also, check out my YouTube channel, <laughs> Brooklyn Baritone. You could find more of my video content there, my different projects I got on there. Anyways, you could also find me on Instagram and on Facebook. I'm also on LinkedIn under Corey Ashley. You could also find the audio versions of these podcasts on Google Podcast, 
Apple iTunes Podcasts, Amazon Music Under Podcasts, and other various podcast platforms. I also air on local cable Brooklyn television four times a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Verizon Optimum RCN and Spectrum. Again, thank you guys for listening. That was informative to you. I was approached by a few people to cover this, and it was already in my head, so it was it was inevitable for me to talk about something that's a little bit off of what I usually talk about. Anyways, you hear from me next week. Be good. Be blessed. I'm out.